In this video, we'll deepen our generalized scalability, challenge the mental representations we developed in rocking thirds, and understand a process for all of our future scale patterns. Rocking fourths is exactly like rocking thirds, except for one thing, the notes are one bar further apart. This is designed to be frustrating mentally and force you to rebuild a lot of your mental representations and challenge a lot of your assumptions about how the pattern goes together. It's also designed to cause you to rebuild your process from scratch so that we understand the way that we're going to build each new pattern we learn. One of the best pieces of advice I ever heard for how to learn or relearn something was to do it as if you didn't already know what you were doing. The human mind has a very difficult time learning something if it thinks it already knows what's going on. Start rocking fourths in C, left, right, left, right, as before. C, F, E, G, E, A, F, B, G, C, A, B, D, E, C. Notice the mental tension of playing such a similar pattern, but with different targets and a different sound in your ear. Take a moment and try this one on your own. Next, in the key of F, you'll notice one of your hands starts on B-flat. Probably the most common error people will make in rocking fourths is that their hands will close to a third when they get to some important part of the pattern. So, for example, here in B-flat, if we play in rocking thirds, that B flat is going to come in on the following hand right after this A. But in rocking fourths, it's going to come after G. G, B flat. So what will happen is if you're moving a little too quickly, your mechanical system will identify that you got to the note A and will automatically close your hands to a third because that's what it's used to doing, and that'll look like this. So I finished the scale in thirds because my hand jumped when it was supposed to go from D to C. It went from D to B flat because that's what it had gotten used to doing when we were playing rocking thirds. This highlights the fact that when you're working on these patterns, you're not just working on this pattern. You're also working against the prior background conditioning you have from the previous patterns. You don't deliberately make every association you have with a pattern. Your background mechanical system is noticing things during your playing and is making connections and linking things together that you're not aware of. This rocking fourths pattern reveals some of the unintended associations you probably made when you were practicing rocking thirds, and it's going to force you to break them apart and then rebuild better associations on purpose to improve your scale facility. This not only improves your overall scale processing ability, but it's building a mental toolkit that's going to help you develop all future patterns. As you practice, embrace the frustration and follow it to the solutions that you need to build mentally. Make sure you're still puzzle solving as before, producing a good tone, and moving at the speed of success.